Hi everybody, so welcome to this video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you floral cookies. Uh, these are gonna be used in a patchwork cutter spring set. It's a very versatile set, not only for spring, but for really for the whole year, um, as some of the elements in there can be used other times of seasons as well. So let's get started. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the fundamentals of how I created these floral cookies. Now I've done these obviously in a spring sort of pink colors, but of course you could do these in all different color palettes. And as I said in the introduction, things like hydrangeas, forget-me-nots, they are basically, you know, can use those any time of year. Obviously tulips you think a little bit more seasonally. Um, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about doing decorated sugar cubes as well. Um, so it's a fun way of using some of these little cutters. So I'm just gonna pop these out of the way. Now the, um, all of the floral part is created with this uh, patchwork cutter spring flower set. So this is a product you'll find on nicholaslodge.com under patchwork cutters. And in this spring flower set, uh, it has all of these different elements in this one pack. We will also include with your package a size guide because this is how I measure the paste, all right, it references that. And plus also we're going to send you an instruction sheet as well. So this actually sort of outlines all of what I'm showing you in the instructions. This also has some additional spring cookies done with uh, my Flower Pro Ultimate Filler Flower as well. So anyway, we're going to, um, first of all, with patchwork cutters, when you use these, you break them apart. So a little bit like a you know, model um, car or um, sub kit, plastic kit. So you just take them apart and obviously make sure you keep them all in the little bag. So that will obviously keep them all together. So first of all, there are several elements. This is a lily. I don't actually have this shown, but this could be obviously done in white and painted. You could do this in orange and then paint the leaves green. You can also do it in applique technique, which I'm gonna talk about. So that is the lily. We have the daffodil, which I actually have a daffodil here. So obviously you do that very similar to the tulip in that you do the stems and the leaves and the leaves of the daffodil, we use these long skinny leaves, all right? So these are the daffodil leaves and the one that's bent. So that's really cute to use. Like for example, you could do this for Easter on a chocolate Easter egg. It looks really, really nice. I've done that before. Um, you could use these in different ways. And of course, you can change the color of the daffodil up quite a lot as well. These are jonquils or like narcissi, so this would be like paper whites. So these would obviously can be used for, as I said, smaller daffodils and paper whites and narcissi and jonquils. And then um, these are the main ones that I'm going to be using. So this is the tulip, all right? And this is the tulip, uh, French tulip, and then it has its leaves, all right? Which is what I've used obviously for the cookie here. You can see it makes a really beautiful um, flower on top. I've also done this on, uh, in classes on French purse clay classes. I've done this on, uh, in, uh, as I said, on cake boards. You've done it on the top of a small cake. You could do say three tulips on a little six inch cake for somebody for springtime birthday. So there's lots of ways of using that. And then this is the little tulip embosser. And that can be used in two ways. So first of all, you can actually use it as an embosser. So on this monogram cookie, I actually embossed that into the soft fondant and I then painted that, which I'm gonna talk more in depth about these in a second. But anyway, so I embossed that and printed. And then you can also actually use that as a little cutter. So you can actually use that as a cutter when I show you how to cut out. So here the little tulips and then the little leaves on here were cut out for this little um, sort of round circle on this cookie. So very versatile products. Um, this is hydrangea, which actually is one of my favorite hydrangea. I love hydrangea flowers. And again, very versatile in that we can use this as an embosser. So you can actually emboss that over the surface of the fondant. And then you can also use this as a cutter. And here I've created like a little head of hydrangeas in the middle of the cookie. All right, so very, very nice um, to uh, obviously use in again, different applications. And also like on the sugar cube there, I've used a little hydrangea on a sugar cube as well. And of course, hydrangeas come in many colors. You could do them in white or green or blue, purple, pink. Um, and then this is the little forget-me-not. So a little forget-me-not, again, very, very cute little flower, very, very useful to use in so many different applications. And uh, so here you can see I've used the little forget-me-nots, a little ring of forget-me-nots there. That's been piped with royal icing. And then again, I've combined them with the little tulips on that cookie here. All right, so, so we're gonna get started. Now, 
when we use patchwork cutters, our technique is a little different, all right? So, uh, so first of all, when we're using patchwork cutters, we're normally going to use, um, as I said, gum paste, all right? Or you can modify uh, rolled fondant or sugar paste with Tylo's powder, but you're gonna use gum paste for this. So I'm gonna start off, first of all, just by showing you how to use the patchwork cutters as an embosser, okay? So here, for example, on this simple little cookie here, literally what I did is I just took the little embosser I just went all over the surface of this, like this. I'm just gonna create this nice pattern. I've done this on cake boards, I've done this in sections on a cake. You see, and you just could cover a whole big sheet of fondant, like this. And then of course, you could then take your cookie, you're gonna do, so just make sure this is big enough for the veneer. And you can change the direction of this and just sort of fill in, like this. And then of course, you just would then cut out the veneer, like this. And there is what I call the panel, the section that goes onto a cookie. And then of course you could let this dry a little bit and then this could just be attached to the top of a cookie, sort of like this type of technique. Um, so you can have a border to pipe or you can make it the same size as the cookie like I have here. But that could be textured. You could also, um, so you could brush pearl dust onto this, you can leave it plain. You can also go in with some metallic, this is a metallic um, piping gel. I've just gone into the center of the hydrangeas with a little bit of gold. So there's lots and lots of fun things you can do there with the hydrangea. So that's using it as an embosser, okay? Now next thing I'm gonna show you how to use this as an actual uh, little cutter. Now first thing we're gonna do is going to take some um, I'm gonna work from the instructions. So in your instructions here, sort of it tells you that they emboss in the hydrangea. So for the, for the hydrangea, we're gonna create the uh, rolled fondant veneer. We're gonna add a number eight ball, the same color, colored fondant in the center of the veneer um, using uh, piping gel, all right? So what we would do, so like for example, if you had done, this is your cookie, all right? So obviously in this one here, I did a slightly bigger cookie and I did it in pale pink, but you use your um, fondant that you have, and we use the size guide. And with your size guide, we're gonna take a number eight size ball of paste. Now, so what you do there is you're gonna take your fondant, all right, and you're gonna make a number eight size ball of paste. So remember, we include a size guide. So this is gonna be one third below, two thirds above, okay? And that's gonna be a number eight size ball of paste. So I do this the same color as the cookie, so if it was pink or green or whatever color you've done. Now, of course, if you're doing flooded royal icing cookies, because you could totally do these on royal icing, you're just gonna make a little ball of fondant or you can even do a little sort of mound of royal icing. So I'm just gonna flatten that out. So I'm gonna make almost like a little mushroom shape. And then I will take my piping gel. So I'm using just a little bit of piping gel. I'm using here a little needle tip applicator has a silicone tip on it, so this keeps the piping gel in excellent condition. And I'm just gonna pop that in the middle of the cookie. So you're gonna create this little mound, because then when you build up your hydrangea head, you see how you're gonna create that natural mound, all right? Next, we're going to take some green gum paste, and um, so then we're going to roll out green gum paste number four on pasta machine, cut out using the rose leaf leaf cutter, and vein on the multi -vainer. All right, so these are the, this is uh, some of my, I have a set of so actually four of these cutters, all right? So this is a small size, there's a medium, a large, and an extra large. And so what we're gonna do here is gonna roll out some green gum paste. So I've already got this rolled out. So I'm just gonna just take a little bit of green gum paste here, just roll that out. I'm just gonna show you just one of these. I'm just gonna just cut this out. So this is number four on the pasta machine, okay? But obviously you do three of these per, per garland. This is the, my multi-leaf vena. All right, I'm gonna just take a little tiny, tiny bit of vegetable shortening. Alternatively, you can also, I'm gonna talk about Easy Release. So Easy Release is a product I have. This is an organic beeswax, coconut oil, and lemon oil product. Uh, you can also use this. It's not quite as oily as the shortening or vegetable fat. And then you're just gonna take your leaf, just gonna pop your leaf into here, like so. I'm gonna fold this over, like this. I'm gonna press this down. Just gonna vein it. When you pop this off of the veiner, you'll have this lovely veining onto here. Now on the hydrangea, I'm actually gonna do it so the heavier veining I'm gonna use up to the top. And I'm going to take your, um, I'm gonna use my little stick here. 
We're just going to just soften the edge. You can do this on your finger or on your little pad here, but it's kind of just going to soften around your edge of your leaf just a little bit, just to give a little bit of shape to it. And then you're just going to take that, just pinch it like a little bit like a taco shape. I'm just going to show you one of these, but then you'd attach the leaf here. So obviously you do one, two, three, and you just will attach the leaf. So the little leaf is going to be attached here, like so. And you see that's going to create the, obviously the leaf, all right? And you see here, this obviously remember is a bigger cookie, but you get the idea. Of course, you can do a smaller ball or a larger ball as well there. Now, when we do the hydrangea, so then in your instructions here, it says for the flowers, roll out white GP, so gum paste, number five on pasta machine, rub surface with easy relief for shortening. Now, when we use the, them as cutters, all right, you want to have like a plastic surface. This is one of my, uh, you know, it's like a plastic scraper. So you can use the back of this. It's sort of shiny, all right? So you want something, this is like a slightly textured, so this won't work, but you need something that's sort of shiny and smooth. All right, and you take either just a little bit of vegetable shortening and just rub that on the surface. Or as I said, you can use a little bit of easy release. The easy release, we use this for patchwork cutters as well. But so basically either or of those, you don't need to use both. And then we have a little bit of white paste here. So I'm gonna roll out some white paste. And then what I'm gonna do here is just gonna cut this into a section. I'm gonna put this onto so it actually sort of sticks down onto the vegetable shortening, okay? So then in directions, it then says, um, so in the directions here, it then says, um, lay paste smooth down, emboss one flower as a guide. So you're gonna take the little embosser as a guide. So we're just gonna emboss that onto there. So that's gonna give me, so I know how big this is, all right? And then we're gonna take some dusting powder and I'm gonna use some Blue and purple, I'm using here periwinkle blue and royal purple, okay? So I'm gonna start off with the blue first. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of blue. Now, of course, you can, you can do like 60 flowers, 100 flowers, whatever you feel you want to use. But also remember, gum paste does dry fairly quickly. So what I'm actually doing here is see I'm going to actually dust like blue circles. So I'm using this as my guide, you see, so that I know sort of approximately how big the flowers will be. So I'm just gonna go over the surface here like this. You can do these quite close to each other because you can cut them out. It's very close, okay? So you can get a lot of those circles in a sort of small amount of paste. Don't use too much powder, all right? And then I'm going to change out to the purple. So this is then using the royal purple color. So this is sort of a purple. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now brush around the outside of that. So you see I'm getting the sort of blue and the purple. Remember, I'm sort of using my sort of guide from my from my actual embossed flower onto here, you see? But of course this could be done in different color combinations, okay? And then once you've finish that. So what I normally do is just pat that, just pat that with a, and you know, I could cut like 30 flowers out of that little mat. I'm just going to get rid of my napkin now. And you see then what I do is take the cutter. So again, use a little bit of easy release or a little bit of shortening on your finger. Oop. And then just going to rub that onto the cutter. All right, and then what we can do, now we can actually cut this out. So what you do is you're just gonna just press these on like this, like this. So you see, you're just gonna go all over the surface. So what we actually want is with patchwork cutters, technique is totally different than usual cut, normal cutters. And we actually want the paste to stay stuck to the surface because if we try and use this like a normal cutter, because of the way they're designed, you try and pull the paste out, most of the time it's just gonna break, you see? So then you can use like your little companion tool, just gonna pull this paste up, all right? And then all you do is you see, you just pop these out with your finger like this and your little hydrangeas will come off of here and you see they're already pre-dusted, okay? So this makes it very, very sort of quick to do because you can imagine if you were dusting each of these individually, it would take a long time to do. So you just pull these off and you can of course just continue. I'm just gonna show you a few of these 
And of course you could do the color stronger, you can make it sort of uh, more blue. And then the idea is, is you just, once you get your little hydrangeas done, you just would take some piping gel, just put some little dots of piping gel over the surface here. And I'm just gonna literally just use my little companion tool here. Just gonna pick these up. You see how you're just gonna literally just cover over. You're just gonna build this over the top of here like that. So just gonna pop these on. And of course you could have these made uh, I, a lot of times with something like this, prefer to put them on while they're soft because they're still flexible. But you can see the sort of the idea and you just would continue covering that over and that will give you your little, um, your little uh, hydrangea blossoms, flowers, all right? Now the little dots on here are traditionally, a lot of times we do that sort of thing with rolled fondant. What I'm actually doing here is I'm gonna use some non-parels, okay? I'm gonna just show you with yellow ones because it's a little bit of a contrast uh, to see, but these were actually done with white nonpareils. So nonpareils are these little small things here. And this is done with a needle tip applicator. Now, when you buy this, it comes in a little set, all right? So you're gonna take, now this is orthodontic wax or dental wax, all right? So used in braces. So what you do is you're going to use a little plug of the wax on the end inside this, all right? Keep this in a little plastic bag, stops it drying. If you ever should need this again, and some more of this, just obviously you can buy this basically where you buy toothpaste and dental wax and thing, floss and things like that. But uh, this will last for months and months, all right? And um, so then what you do is when, you, when you're using the, um, so how I actually did that is I just put a little tiny bit of piping gel onto my table. Now if your um, you're rolled fondant or your royal icing is still wet, you can do that. But what you actually do is you're just going to do, so you see what I'm doing is I'm just dipping that in the piping gel and just going to just go, just going to put a little tiny dot and then you literally just prep, pull these up on the wax here and they will just go and you see how it just fits onto the end of here like so and you get perfect little piped, basically little dots because doing this in royal icing, you have to have your royal icing the right consistency, because if not, you'll have little spikes on it. But you see how literally you just go over the surface of this. So the fondant can be semi-dry, but if the fondant's soft or the royal icing is still wet, you can actually put this straight into the royal icing or the fondant, okay? And uh, so that's a really fun way to, uh, to uh, obviously, to do those. And then um, to finish that one off, I just used some white royal icing and I just piped a little shell board around the outside of that with a number 1.5 royal icing, okay? Um, same with this one. So those are the two, uh, those first two cookies, all right? So just gives variations on those. Now when we do um, things like the little forget-me-nots, all right, the forget-me-nots are done. So those are, will be done in uh, floral wreaths. So those will be done and I've used here, so there's two variations on that. So this is actually done with a cross stitch design, this lovely texture on the fondant. So that is actually done using the KD Sue. This is the KD Sue cross stitch um, embosser. All right, so this is the cross stitch mat. All right, so this is perfect for a cookie. And what you actually do there is you'd roll out your fondant. Okay, you put this on top of the fondant. I put the flower press, distribute the weight, press this over the top. And then when you cut that out, you'll get this beautiful textural uh, detail onto here and you can do this for cross stitch. So actually using the, using the little dragee applicator, you could do a cross stitch design like for Mother's Day, write mom on there or whatever to look like little stitches. But uh, that's how I got this, this lovely texture onto here, okay? And then when you are using, when we're doing these flowers, I'm using here some blue, number five. All right, so this has been this is blue rolled out. Now this is um, I'm using here. The blue is Renshaw, uh, the white is Renshaw. So uh, we have the Renshaw comes colored in blue. This is the yellow uh, comes in pink. So you use number five. And again, this is going to be the little tiny forget me not, which is so you're going to use your here's the little forget me not. So just again, just a little tiny bit of, and then literally, as I said, with that, you just press this on the top, like so, like so, you see? So obviously we do the blue. Now, if they do come out, what that means is you don't have enough um, shortening down 
on there okay so if you see so they come out like that because although you can get them out but you're usually going to damage them so you just need to make sure there's enough obviously shortening or the easy release on there that they stay stuck okay and again you just take these off so obviously this is the sort of thing you could make literally hundreds of and you're just going to take your little forget-me-nots here I'm just going to pop these out and again once you've got your little forget-me-nots done here okay going to put just a little tiny dot of piping gel this is where the needle tip applicator works really well because it's just going to give you the tiniest little dot of piping gel in the middle here okay and then you're just going to take your little non-pareil and with your non-pareils here it's going to pop these into the middle here like that you see how you're going to get like little perfect centers into your so non pareils you can buy these assorted, but you can buy them in yellow, you can buy them in white, you can buy them. In... This actually will uh, even you'll be able to pick up larger pearls and dragées as well with this as well on the wax, okay? And when you, um, if you've used it for two or three months, and I would usually just keep it, it comes in like a little seal bag. So when you're finished with it, just keep it in a seal bag, that will stop the wax drying out. But if you need to re-plug it, I normally use my little companion tool you just take the little plug of wax out of it and then you just take the little plug out and then just re-plug that, okay? And that's how you would do the little, um, the little forget-me-nots, you see? All right. And then when you're doing the um, little tulips and things, same, same sort of concept, but just make sure, as I said, you put enough, but just this works really well, this little scraper as a surface to put this on. And you see here when you are doing the two so you can actually take the the little tulips here and you can actually just use it like like this so you're just going to press this on just onto the edge now i'm just showing you these just in a more of a pale pale pink color but you can do these of course in a darker pink and then what you actually do here is you're going to use just a little i'm going to just actually cut that with the little companion tool because this is made as an embosser but you see, you can actually just take that and then you, when you take these out, they will just come out like that. You're going to get the little tulips, you see? I was going to get the little tulips, so you can cut out the little tulips. And then you would do exactly the same with the little leaves, all right? And so, as you can see, what I then did is I just used a round cutter. So you just emboss, once you've done your embroidery grid, emboss that so you've got a circle. I used the number one tip with green royal icing and then I just added the little leaves, the little tulips and uh, some little calyxes on there and just to finish that off. All right. So that's sort of a really nice way of using uh, using that. And then again, this one was done just with the forget me nots. But you see how beautiful they are used. And again, I've done a royal icing herringbone design around the edge here. All right. So but these are so useful, these little forget me nots, because when you do cupcakes and things and you can see here, I've used them. Um, uh, on the sugar cubes. Uh, having a school in Japan, like in Japan at most weddings, they serve sugar cubes usually at the wedding when coffee or tea is served, two little decorated sugar cubes. So they actually have stencils in Japan for sugar cubes, but it's a really nice idea. And here in the Southern United States, like for bridal luncheons and things like that, um, you could, something that's really, really nice, you could use these in iced tea, but you can actually use royal icing or you could do little, obviously monograms, you could do the initials of the couple. So there are lots of ways of using that. Um, so that's sort of, uh, as I said, a fun, fun way to do for baby showers. And of course you can decorate those with royal icing and all sorts of things. So those are the little flowers. Now the tulip, um, and so, sorry, just talking to people. So this one here, all right, so this is obviously um, the same uh, tulip embosser. So that was embossed onto the fondant. And then I used some of the sugar press. Uh, these are sugar press um, acrylic letters. So these was in, this is one of the designs. I did a B. So I just embossed that into the fondant. And then what I actually did is I just filled that, um, filled that with um, piping gel. And I then just sprinkled the white non pareils on there and then just shook them off. So that gives you a sort of a nice textural monogram. Okay, it's a very quick way of doing that. Of course, you can also paint this in or flood it in with royal icing. When I embossed this, so I just embossed that almost in a sort of a square. So basically rolled out my fondant, embossed the monogram first, and then I did the square of tulips around the outside of it, then cut it into a square shape. Square is also a fun way. It's a different, little bit more of a contemporary modern look for a cookie. It's a very nice keepsake. 
And then when I painted these in, I used uh, some pink gel and green gel and added a little bit of white to it because when you add the white gel to the color, it makes it opaque, all right? So that's how you get this almost like opaque look. But it also means if this was black fondant, I means I could paint still the pink and green on top of the black. Whereas if I took pink and painted it on black, you wouldn't see it. Add a little tiny bit of the white gel color to the pink and to the green makes it opaque, so it masks out the background color, all right? Again, this is finished off with the Royal Icing. And then on the uh, tulip, um, tulip here, so the tulip one, you're going to use a number seven small, okay? So you're going to use a number seven small piece of paste, and you can use gum paste or fondant there, and what that would be, that would actually be here, meaning that you use a number seven small size, and this is how we're going to do the padding on the tulip, okay? So you're going to do, so use a number seven small, so that wants to just go through the hole, all right, like that, so it's a number seven small size. And then you make that into a cone shape, and you flatten it. Now an alternative is to use an almond, all right? So you just use an unblanched almond, so that works very, very well, and of course tastes nice to eat on top of a cookie, all right? So that's your first part of the tulip. And then when we do the tulip, we're going to roll the, for the tulip and the leaves, going to roll out number four PM on the pasta machine, white and green gum paste, as for the hydrangeas. So this is number four, all right? So this is going to be number four here. So because we want this a little bit thicker, and you're going to just take the, and again, of course, you can do several of these, and you can store them as well. They store very well. So again, just a little bit of the vegetable shortening fat down here or the easy release and then you're going to just take that and then when you finish with the cutters I usually just use a nail brush a little bit of dish soap some washing up liquid to just clean this and so what you do here is you're going to just press this on now patchwork cutters all right I wanted to show you this as I said how when you want it to stay as a complete design you press gently okay and then you press around the outside of this because they have, for example, patchwork cutters do bride and grooms and all sorts of things. And you see, so what that's done, that means it's embossed the design of the tulip, all right? But what it actually does is it's cut around the outside. Now, if you press too hard, so like, for example, if you press too hard all over this, all right, press really firmly all over, what will actually happen, it will almost cut it like a jigsaw puzzle, all right? And we use that technique, all right, when we're doing like decoupage. So for example, this daffodil, you see that daffodil I cut out in yellow, all right, like this technique here. So what it is, I just pressed gently and pressed around the outside. Then I rolled out some orange, and then with the, the trumpet part, I just press nice and firmly. So then you see the trumpet will then come out separately, and then you can glue that on the top of the yellow, you see? And that is how you would like dress a figure. So, you know, like you, but also here on the tulip, if I wanted to, I could take one of these, these pieces here, but you see how these will actually just separate, like almost like a separate pieces. So you could actually take that, and you see how then I could actually do like a decoupage, so I could build another, another layer on top of this, you see? So that's sort of like decoupage technique, which we use the patchwork for. But so remember, when you're doing like the tulip here, so you're just going to press, just going to press um, just gently, and then you're going to press around the edge, okay? So that's sort of how we would do the tulip. So then you take your tulip, I'm going to pop that onto a napkin, okay? And I'm going to put some pearl dust onto this first of all, so I'm going to use a little bit of pearl dust. Pearl dust is in a pump brush, and when I'm doing small areas, I have the cuff locked down, okay? So I'm just going to put some pearl dust onto the tulip, so that's going to give you a concentrated pearlescent, and then you put the lid back on. When I'm doing large surface areas like a cake or a drape, I'll have the cuff open, okay? And then I'm going to take some pink and some, so I'm going to take a little bit of pink. This is some American Beauty pink, and I'm going to just brush this with a flat brush going to brush from the source away from the source. So I'm just going to brush around the edge of the tulip. So you see how you're going to get a nice color just around the edge. And then we're going to take some green, so a little bit of prairie green here. And then we're just going to brush from the source. Wait, so I want to put a little bit of green just coming on the bottom of the tulip like that. Okay. And that's how you would 
do the tulip. So see, that's how the tulip will be done. And then once you've done that, you're going to use some green gum paste or some um, a green gum paste uh, with an extruder, or you can just roll a sausage freehand. So I just rolled this little sausage uh, freehand here. So you can just roll this out. Okay, so you just make a little sausage here. And of course, this you could build straight onto your cookie. And then when you put this down, so you basically would take a little bit of your um, piping gel, you put that on the top of the almond. Let me see, then you take your, and then that would go over the top of the, the cookie like that. So that would go over the top of the, to create the pillow effect, you see, you see how that's sort of how you make the shape of the, of the tulip, you see, with the almonds. So you see the almond is just in there, in there, and that's how you would get the shape. So of course, all of these components could be pre-made in advance. So you could have these all made in advance, these components. And then when you build this, you would add the, you'd obviously add the stem. So you'd add your stem to your, to your uh, tulip. And then when you make the leaf, so the leaves will be done in the same way. This is green number four. And this is the tulip leaf cutter here. So again, just gonna press sort of gently and just press around the outside of this. I do have a DVD as well, um, which is like Mastering the Art of Patchwork Cutters. It just sort of goes through showing some of the the sort of figures and how to do decoupage and different techniques because I said they're an amazing uh, line of cutters but it's just the technique we use is a little bit different from a normal cutter. You see then you just press and just pull these away. This gives you your little leaves here. All right and then you see then you just would add your, of course you use a little bit of piping gel onto there and then you're just going to just pinch the bottom of the leaf like this you just would add the leaf with a little piping gel and then this one here and you can also um, give your leaf like a little bit of shape here like that. So you see how you can actually sort of bend the leaf to shape like that. But you can see here on the finished cookie, you can see the sort of the technique. But of course you could do like a whole bunch, you could do like five stems and then you could do different colored tulips and then of course you could do the leaves and then here you could have like a nice bow, all right? So companies like Katie Sue Designs have nice bow molds or you could make a bow uh, to go on to the flower. Um, but those are, as I said, using the, um, using the floral design. So as I said, this is the patchwork cutter um, spring flower set, all right? And uh, obviously we are um, going to include with that, as I said, the instruction sheet, which obviously has all the step-by-step -step instructions of the thickness of the pasta machine. And then also uh, how to, uh, obviously the size guide, which we use for a couple of the projects. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, watching me create some spring and seasonal fun cookies using the patchwork cutter spring flower set and you'll have fun trying these techniques out on this and other cookie designs. Until next time, sweet wishes, see you real soon.